the bakers of Weber's Bread present your all-star Western Theater. From Hollywood comes your all-star Western Theater. Starring America's great Western singers, Boy Willing and the Riders of the Purple Sage. We welcome a return visit from that grand cowboy champion today, Marty Montana. Our guest star, friends and neighbors, is Jackie Cooper. This is Cottonseed Park, and here are the Riders of the Purple Sage. Hear my song as I ride along, I'm just a happy roving cowboy. Heard in the dark clouds out of the sky. Frontier was regarded with suspicion until he had shown what kind of a man he really was. He wasn't accepted by the cowpunchers until he had proved his ability to take it and to dish it out. Today, famous Weber's bread is popular because its true worth has been proved for many long years. Southern California housewives buy Weber's bread because they know that its quality is consistent. Weber's bread is always well mixed and well baked. It always has the firm, even texture and distinctive flavor that makes it a mighty welcome addition to every meal on the daily food menu. If you're not already a Weber's Bread fan, buy a loaf and serve it to your family. They'll like Weber's Bread. We tossed a brand new rope into our guest star corral today. And the result means a very special treat and a real Western thrill to you listeners of the All-Star Western Theater. A young man who is one of Hollywood's greatest stars comes to our microphone and a story of the West prepared especially for him. The story is entitled, The Bandit. The star is both an old favorite and a new favorite of yours, having been one of the outstanding child stars of all time and who has maintained his great popularity throughout the years. Friends and neighbors, Mr. Jackie Cooper as The Bandit. Somewhere in old Wyoming, a full moon looks down upon a handful of cowboys gathered around a campfire. They recall their day's toil, speak of the morrow's work, and turn to that few moments before the fire's death when a song or two seems to just naturally fit into the end of day. get along, little is it your misfortune and none of my own. Whoopie-tie-yo, get along, little that Wyoming's gonna be your new home. <laughs> uh, that's, 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 that's well, boys, it's uh, about I'm about ready to hit the stack here. It's getting late. Yeah, boy, <laughs> sure is. You know, boys, you know, as far as I'm concerned, though, I'd just as soon sit here and listen to you sing all night. Yeah, that's for me, too. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I wonder who this is riding up at this time of night. Well, I hope it's not the boss with more orders. Uh, I'm about ready to hit the trail for home. Yeah, well, me, too. I'm planning on riding in tomorrow night. Well, bust my button. 
Look who it is. It's the <laughs> cowboy come home. Well, Hiya, bo- <laughs> Hiya, boys. How's it going? Well, 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 well Monty well. Montana, it's good to see you again. Yeah, yeah where have you been, Monty? What you been doing? Well, I've been there? making the rodeo circuit ever since I left here last summer. <laughs> well, now, uh, what brings you out from the ranch this time of night? Well, I remember how you boys used to do a little singing around the old fire, so I thought I'd just come around and kind of get in on it. Good idea. <laughs> well, now, Marty, uh, being as it's you and to make it kind of a homecoming, I reckon the boys will be glad to oblige. Sure, well, that's right, Money. What will it be? Fine, just start the commencement. All right, Johnny, grab your guitar and let's tell him the story of the battle. Come on. Long, long ago in old Wyoming lived a maid Fair as the sweetest flower blooming in the shade she loved a bandit bold who roamed the prairie o'er. Every night she'd listen for his call. Far in the west his horse came ringing, riding the wild horse he came singing. Eely, oly, yippie, oly, yay. Eely, oly, yippie, oly, yippie, oly, yay. He brings the token of his love. Swift as the wind he goes far high in the hills he goes his way. One day he rode away, but never to return. Danger was waiting now, his love was never yearned. Long days and lonely nights he waited all in vain. The winter passed and summer came again. Still every night when the moon came shining, for his song her heart was pining. Eely, oly, 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 She closed her eyes and bid the angel go. Then the whole world echoed to his song. Straight down the moonbeam he came riding, out of the sky on the winged horse riding. Eely, oly, 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 That is fine. Sure, much obliged to you. You know, it would have sure been something if a bandit like that rascal had a really lived. Well, sure, he did live. Are oh. you kidding me? No, never. boys, that's a fact. The very bandit your song tells you about made history up in this part of the country years ago. Well, I never heard about it. Well, now, that's that's because you boys are still new in these parts. <laughs> well, come on, Dad, and tell us about it. Yeah, yeah let's hear the story. Oh, yeah, all right, all right, if you'd like. Uh, uh, sit down, will you, Monty? Thank you, Dad. You know, I reckon it was uh, close to about 50 years ago. Uh, not more than 15 miles from this campfire where we're sitting right now, there uh, lived a rancher by the name of Clem Martin and his daughter. Uh, her name was Marie, and she was as pretty as pitcher. <laughs> uh, you know, it seemed that things was going mighty hard with the Martins, and uh, young Tom Dixon, the uh, son of the wealthy neighboring rancher, was taking advantage of the situation. No, I don't like to see you and your dad worrying about financial troubles. Why don't you marry me, and we'll combine the two places? Give Clem a good job, and your troubles will all be over. I appreciate your generous offer, Tom, but, well, I'm not in love with you. Well, what's that got to do with it? I mean, uh... I know what you mean. No, Tom, we're not for sale. All right. That's the way you look at it. I was only trying to help. I'm sorry, Tom, but you're going about it the wrong way. You're not forgetting that the bank carries some mighty heavy paper on this ranch, and there's very little time left. And that your father tells Banker Higgins what to do. I didn't say that. But that's what you meant. Excuse me, someone's at the door. Yes? Howdy, ma'am. Is the man of the house in? No, he isn't. Is there something I can do? Well, my horse threw a shoe a while back, and he's getting kind of lame. I thought maybe you might have a blacksmith shop in the place. Why, certainly. I'll get a lantern and show you where it is. I'm sorry, friend, but we won't be able to help you. Well, the young lady says different. Tom, I'm surprised at you. Well, we don't cotton much to strangers around here. No, just a minute. We're getting kind of confused. 
Where do you fit in this picture? The young lady is my fiancée. That's not true. Well, while you two figure that out, could I use your blacksmith shop? My horse is still lame. You certainly may. Just a moment. Here's the lantern. The shop is just this side of the barn. I'll be down to help you in a moment. Thank you, ma'am. Tom Dixon, don't you ever say that to anyone again as long as you live. Look, Marie, that fellow's a stranger. I don't care who he is. Now, you can get out of this house and stay out. You'll regret that. No, I don't think so. Hello there. Finding everything? Oh, hi, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Just helping myself. Oh, good. You'll find some horseshoes on the bench there. Oh, thank you, ma'am. Ah, here, boy. Easy. Oh, I don't think I've ever seen a horse so pretty. He's so white. Oh, there's none better or faster, ma'am. Ah, boy, here. Give me your foot. Do you think he'd mind if I petted him? Well, if I was in his place, I wouldn't. Oh. <laughs> What's his name? I call him Bandit. What's yours? Well, I'm Marie Martin. What's yours? Well, my mother used to call me Stinky. But uh, I answer a lot quicker to Andy. You're new here, aren't you? That's right. Just passing through. But I'm beginning to think I might like it in these parts. Well, I'm sure you would. Uh, by the way, where'd your uh, your friend go? Home. And to stay, I hope. Oh, lover's quarrel. He means nothing to me. I'm glad of that. And I'm glad that you're... Oh. Well, I mean... Ah, now. That's that. Oh, you're through so soon? Oh, if I'd have thought of it sooner, I would have taken a little longer. Um, uh, maybe you'd better check the shoes on his other feet. They, uh, they might be loose. I got a better idea than that. What do you mean? I could come back tomorrow night. Well, I... If he... My father... I don't want to see him. Oh, he might object. He happened to be in town tonight at a meeting, and oh, I... I won't tell him if you won't. All right. Meet me at the Twin Fork Tree near the canyon. I know right where it is. Passed it less than an hour ago. At midnight? Midnight. There was something about this young fella that made her heart beat heavy. Well, where'd he come from? No one ever knew. And that didn't seem to matter as far as Marie was concerned. She liked him from the minute she laid eyes on him. At any rate, he rode into town that night and strolled into the palace saloon. Over in one corner, a handful of men seemed to be having a little business meeting. One of them was Clem Martin. Now, this young fella moved over with him. Well, if you ask me, I don't think there's one of us who's got a dog's chance. Old man Dixon and Higgins have been on freezing us out. And legally, they can do it. Yeah, but everybody knows they've made it so tough on us. We didn't have a chance to square up our dance. Yeah. Why, only last week I lost 65 head of the best thief on my spread. And I'd bet my bottom dollar that Dixon and Higgins could tell who done it. Yeah, but we can't prove it. Well, we all decided to meet here to figure out the best move. What are we going to do, men? Oh, I haven't got the answer. Uh, looks to me like you're going to be the first one they'll act on, Clem. What did you know to mouth to? Better than 8,000 and due in two weeks. That's bad. I'm telling you, men, I'm at my rope saying I don't know what. What'll it be, friend? I'd like to know something. Who are those men over there in the corner? Well, that tall one is Clem Martin. The fellow with the mustache is Sam Bywaters. And, uh, say, what's it to you? That's my business. Who are the other two? Uh, Joe Hayes and Hank Brennan. Much obliged. Say, I've seen you someplace before. I've been around. Well, uh... What? Oh, nothing, stranger. Nothing. That's what I thought. What is this? It's a stick-up. Reach for the ceiling. Well, I, I, I'm reaching. Now, just open that safe and fill up this sack, and nobody will get hurt. You, you'll not get by with this. Let me worry about that. Right now, you start stuffing that sack with greenbacks. Come on. Oh, all right. Oh, all right. All right. And don't stop till it's full. Here. Here you are. It, it's full. All right. Now, turn around. And don't look back for a couple of minutes, because I might still be behind. I, I won't look. I won't look. Tom, any line on the man who's... 
stuck up old man Higgins this morning? Nothing yet. Well, I hear your dog going there cleaned the bank out. He got close to $10,000. Biggest robbery I ever heard of. A couple of fellas took close to 100000 out of a Cheyenne bank here a few years back. Well, our bank's in good shape, though. Dad and Mr. Higgins are sending a special stage over to Sheridan this afternoon to pick up enough cash to operate on. I'm riding guard. Son, I wouldn't be talking that around if I was you. I just hope somebody does try to stick up that stage with me on it. Well, I've helped very many a brave stage guard that said less. Don't worry about me. Well, I better be going. See you later, Slim. Okay. <laughs> Marie, I'm kind of tired, so I think I'll go to bed, honey. All right, Dad. Uh, uh, if you don't mind, I'll, I'll stay up and read a while. Yeah, but don't be too late, honey. I want you to fix breakfast pretty early for me in the morning. Well, someone is riding by awfully fast. Yeah, I wonder what the meaning of that is. Oh! Say, what is this? Oh, it's a stack tied to a rock. Marie, look, money. Lots of money. <laughs> I didn't know whether you'd be here or not. No, I was thinking the same about you. You you knew I'd be here, didn't you? Yeah, for some reason. Well, there's a very good reason. Is it the same as mine? Is it because you like me very much? Yes. Yeah. That's it, all right. I... I don't know what to say. Don't say anything. I... I love you, Andy. I was afraid of that. What do you mean? Well, look, honey, you, you don't know anything about me. Oh, I don't want to know anything about you, except that I fell in love with you the first moment I saw you. I feel the same way. It won't work, Marie. Well, you've got to quit talking like that. What if your dad knew about this? Oh, he's so happy right now, I don't think he'd object. What's he so happy about? Well, we've been having lots of financial troubles with our ranch, and tonight the strangest thing happened. What do you mean? Well, just after supper, we heard a horse running by, and someone threw a rock through the window. Well, tied to the rock was enough money to clear our place. Dad and I just can't understand it. Well, what do you know about that? Bank in town was robbed this morning, and Dad seems to think the money may have some connection with that. At any rate, he's over with some friend of his trying to figure out what to do. What to do? He didn't rob the bank, did he? Well, certainly not. Well, then keep the money and pay your debts with it. That's the only thing to do. All oh, right. Now I wouldn't give up being in love with you for all the money in the world. <laughs> Judd, we're getting close to home. Nobody's made a pass at holding us up yet. Yep, reckon you can say we made it. I'd like to see somebody. Uh, we bragged too soon, Tom. I'll get him. Watch it, Judd. He's got my gun hand. Whoa, hold up there. Oh, boys, oh. Whoa there, whoa, oh, whoa. Oh. Oh, boys, oh. All right, boys, keep reaching and throw that box down. It ain't in a box, it's in a sack. And throw the sack down. Here you are. Just don't shoot. All right, now get moving. Yes, sir, right now. Get up there. Get up there. Well, boys, I reckon the young bandit was really in love. Because I don't know of anything else that would have kept a man in this part of the country after pulling two jobs like that. Anyway, that night, just after a good dark, uh, Clem Martin's three rancher friends received the same rock through the window with money tied to it. They was mighty puzzled by it, just like Clem was. The same evening, about a couple hours before Marie was to meet her young bandit, Tom stopped in at the Martins to show off his busted gun hand. Hello, Tom. I hear you stopped one of the bandit slugs on the stage today. Yeah, he got the drop on me from ambush. Too bad. Were you able to identify him? Not very well, except uh, that he rode a big white horse. Oh, a big white horse. Well, yes. What about it? Oh, nothing. Nothing at all. Ain't you feeling well, honey? No, no, not very well. I, I think I'll go to my room. You'll have to excuse her, Tom. The past couple of days, she hasn't seemed like her old self. Maybe there's a special reason. What do you mean by that? Oh, nothing. I was just thinking of something. Hello, 
called her. Oh, I've waited for hours, it seems. I'm right on time. Midnight. The Twin Fork Tree in the canyon. Remember? Oh, darling. Hold me tight. No, no. Just a minute. What's wrong here? You've been crying. Oh, I've been so worried about you. Oh, what would you have to worry about? Oh, about someone I love very dearly who, who rides a big white horse. Oh, then you, you know about me? I love you anyway. Ordinarily, there'd be a lot of miles between this town and me, but... Well... Yes? I wanted to see you once more. Once more? You mean... That's right, honey. This is it. Well, I'll go with you. No, no, there's nothing I'd like more, but you know that's impossible. Well, nothing is impossible as long as I love you like I do. Why, if you leave, I'll never see you again. And if I stay in these parts, it'd be the same thing. Honey, this very minute, the posse's probably on the lookout for me. Right now, down at the Twin Forks on the canyon. That's all I wanted to know, Tom. I'll round up my boys. You go over to the palace and get what men you can. If we can get there before he leaves Marie, Sheriff, we'll have him trapped in the corner of the canyon bend. Then hurry. I'll meet you back here in five minutes. You won't cry, but like I said, I can't stand to see a pretty girl crying. All right. I, I promise, but my heart's breaking. Yeah, I know. Me, me too. Heart trouble is the last thing I ever figured it would to me, but I sure got it. Oh, darling. I'll love you as long as I live. I was looking up at that full moon and thinking that same thing about you. Oh, you really mean it, don't you? Yes. Yeah. Wouldn't you know? Someday I'm coming back for you. I promise. You bet I do. And every full moon and midnight, I'll have a picture of you standing right here. I'll be here waiting for you. Listen. There they are, honey. Maybe it's the... No, no, no. That sounds like a lot of men riding hard. And at this time of night, there's a reason for it. Oh, darling, hurry. Wait. Listen, they're, they're coming from the east. Well, there's no way out of this bend in the canyon. Well, what are we going to do? Well, there's only one thing to do. Jump that big ditch. Well, you couldn't do that. You'd be killed. Well, it's a chance I've got to take. But you can't. That canyon is too wide. You don't know my horse. Goodbye, honey. Oh, I'll wait for you all the way. Just remember, regardless of anything, I'll be back to see you. And I'll be here. Oh, please, hurry. They're getting close. I'll make the jump at the point. It's now there. All right, boys, come on in. We got him trapped. Let's close in on him. Sheriff, look. He's going to try to jump the big ditch. He'll never make it. Don't be too sure. All right, come on, boys. Pull up here. Whoa. Hey, look at this. Well, Dad, uh, did he make the jump? Yeah, some of the posse said he made it. The others claim they saw him fall. I reckon no one will ever really know. What happened to the girl? She returned to the big tree near the canyon every full moon at midnight to wait for her lover. Well, did he ever come back? No one ever knew but her, I reckon. At any rate, when she passed on, her body was laid to rest beneath the Twin Forks tree. Since then, people throughout this section of the country swear that with every full of the moon, they hear the bandit and his big white horse roaring across the countryside, echoing through the canyon. Well... That's a mighty interesting story, Dad. Oh, that sure is. Well, sure, that's the real story behind that bandit song you fellas were singing a while ago. <laughs> well, we've got a hard day's work tomorrow. I'm going to hit the sack. Yeah, me too. Say, what time is it, Jimmy? Oh, good gosh, it's straight up midnight. Hey, boys, listen. with Marie, Joe Forte, and Fred Howard. Our guest star will return in a few moments, friends and neighbors. Yes, a stranger out in the West would always be invited to slide out of the leather and be given food and drink. But he would not enjoy the full benefits of famous Western hospitality until he had shown he was worthy of it. Today, Westerners are as hospitable as ever once they know with whom they're dealing. That's why famous Weber's bread is to be found in so many Southern California homes. Yes, Weber's bread is welcome anywhere because of its firm, even texture, its golden brown crust, and its distinctive flavor. Weber's blends well with other foods, and when eaten regularly with every meal, becomes a substantial part of the daily menu. Buy Weber's bread next time you go shopping. You'll find it in the familiar blue gingham wrapper.
And now here's Four Willing returning to our microphone with our guest star, Jackie Cooper. Well, Jackie, there's no need for us to tell you what a real pleasure your visit here today affords us. Well, thank you, Four. I enjoyed it a lot. In fact, I got the reputation of being a little overboard about any and everything that's Western. And you've made a lot of Western pictures to boot. Well, that's right, and enjoyed them more than anything else I've done. Let's see. There was uh, Men of Texas, Lone Cowboys, and The Return of Frank James. Mm -hmm. Not to mention all those rodeos that you've performed in. Oh, there were plenty of those. Monty Montana and I rode together in a lot of shows in Palm Springs. Yes, sir, give me a rodeo and I'm happy. And you can make a lot of other people happy if you'll knock at the door of the All-Star Western Theater again real soon. Well, you can bet I'll be doing that for you. And thanks to all of you, you've been mighty nice to me. So long, everybody. So long to you, Jackie Cooper. And our thanks to our old pal, Monty Montana, for dropping in to see us again today. Monty, it's been real nice having you with us here on our All-Star Western Theater. And when you're not too busy rodeoing, we're going to look for you back real soon. Thank you, sir, and I'll sure be here. Here they are, folks, America's great Western singing stars, Four Willing and the Riders of the Purple Sage. Men of the West from out of the West with another of your favorite Western heart ballads. Their newest majestic phonograph record, No One to Cry To. Western Theater, a V.M. Bayer production starring Four Willing and the Riders of the Purple Sage. Our guest star today has been Jackie Cooper. My name is Cotton C. Clark. Jackie Cooper may be seen in the title role of the Richard Highland Sydney Left production Kilroy Was Here to be released shortly after January 1st. Next week, another great star in a story of the West. program can be used in the studios of KNX Columbia Square. KNX Los Angeles, the voice of Hollywood. 26 seconds before...